Hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do whatever I want, starting at 6.30 for about two-ish hours on Thursday evenings. Hey everybody that's already here. Oh my god. Lar, um, pretending to be here is the same thing as being here. That is so valid. Welcome Lunar, Nikki, Kendra, who I see in here. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. We've got a really fun stream, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> planned for you guys. Uh, Kendra showed me this game that we're going to do that I'm really, really excited about. Of course I know your name, Nikki. What? What? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, but of course, before we get started with the game, I just want to briefly touch on the last video that we had. So we ended our February romance month with my favorite romance tropes and uh and the, usually these tropes videos do horribly like people just aren't interested they aren't really interested in any sort of inspiration videos i just keep making them because i know that the community needs them and asks for them so i keep making them even though they don't get a lot of views however this one got way more views than like any of my trope or inspiration videos ever have so i don't know if it's like the pink aesthetic I don't know if it's like the the face I'm pulling right there, um, but suffice it to say, uh, people were particularly interested in this particular tropes video. So we'll see. We'll see what that means for the future. Ten ten the face. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. I think it probably really is that. It was just kind of a very um, different sort of thing than what you guys are used to seeing from me and my thumbnails, and so. That was probably very interesting and uh, and it got clicks <laughs> compared to some of the other faces I more typically like to pull you know what I mean um, so I don't want to spend like too much time on this because I want to get really stuck into the game so I'm gonna go ahead and switch over make sure this all works yes okay I'm gonna full screen this so here's what I did here's what I did all right so I created an account on this game and I played the tutorial so that I would know a little bit about the mechanics and how it worked and I wasn't like totally fumbling around in this game. So that's why you see a continue here. You can continue past when you finish the tutorial and keep playing the scenario the tutorial gives you if you want to. I didn't choose to do that. I stopped at that point. The other thing that I did is that there is perks in the uh, paid for version of this game, but you get a one week free trial. So I signed up for that, I signed up for the gold. So y'all will hear apparently some voiceovers and stuff. I don't know, we'll find out, but it told me I would get some perks like that. So um, I set that up so that we will get all of those perks and, uh, and y'all will hear music, I think, and some other fun stuff, we'll find out. I don't really know anything about this game. All I have done is play the tutorial, so. Uh, you are in for a ride because I don't really know what to expect, but it is text-based. I can type in whatever I want, so we're going to do some of that. We're going we're gonna to type in whatever I want. <laughs> All right, so we're going to click on new game, though, because I don't really care about continuing the tutorial. All right, we've got worlds, prompts, survival, multiplayer, featured scenario, or tutorial. So I know the featured scenario is like some kind of circus thing because I, I, it was like in a prompt up here and I looked at that right before the stream started. But I think what we're going to do is do worlds because that's my understanding is like the standard way that you do this game. So here's some different, let's just go to the free worlds because I don't really have any scales built up, you know, so I don't really know anything about that. Hey, Bad Cat, welcome. So happy to have you on the stream. I think this is the first time that I've seen you here. Um, we're just getting started, so you've not missed anything. There's a Christmas world. Yeah, this Kringle thing, I guess, is a Christmas world. There's also this Kendar that looks like, um, you know, the Orcs, er Orcs area of Middle Earth. Am I a lizard? Oh, Nikki, you found the new uh, channel point redeem. I will be doing those at the end of the stream. So at the end of the stream, we will do uh, all of your, your tarot questions. <laughs> yes, don't worry, I can see it. And I will, pull, I will pull the tarot card for you and we'll see if you're in fact a lizard or not a lizard. <laughs> um, it looks like we have Winter Bloom as well as a Christmas one. And then, oh, hey, Thumper, welcome. And then we have this quaint little village. So um, we definitely wanna play Seduce or Kill 
on the people we encounter, on the enemies that we encounter. So I think we're going to go with this one right here, this quaint little village. It's fantasy light. Um, and I think that that kind of fits what we're doing. So let's click on that one. Okay. Zanus is a world of peace and prosperity. It is a land which all races live together in harmony. The gnomes build their machines and live among the humans. Elves run the academies in which people come to learn. Ogres have no qualms living in the same town as humans or gnomes. Yet all is not well. Will I be successful in my streaming journey? I don't know, Luna, but we will find out towards the end of the stream. We'll see, we'll see if, uh, if, the, if the cards think so. Apparently there's not. They have some segregation, I see. Like, the gnomes do the machines and the elves do the academies. Like, there's, there's some segregation, but it sounds like there's no cancel culture. They all just live together happily somehow. Um, so we are going to create a character and character's name. All right, so who do we want to who do we want to be? Mm. Thank you, Bad Cat. <clears throat> that is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to create. So, I think we're just going to just to keep it easy and simple. I think um let's uh let's do let's do just a little self insert here. We're just going to do a little self insert going we're going to play ourselves like it's kind of like a like a D&D &D game. Right, so I'm, I'm, I'm a teenager playing D&D, &D, so we're going to do that kind of style. We're going to do female. Is this with dragon or griffin? I have no idea, bad cat. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Um, okay, so we could be a human, elf, dwarf, gnome, ogre, or halfling. Oh, that's what y'all want the name for. Okay, Coxus, Texas. Coxus, Texas. Okay, so Coxus, Texas is a female. Um, humanity is much like the elves. They wish to maintain peace. Humans farm, mine, and trade. They're gifted craftsmen and merchants. They're peaceful people. What about halflings? Halflings are above all artists. They're boastful of themselves as they are good at throwing and gathering friends. Okay, this is what we're going to do, y'all. This is what we're going to do. Artists. Okay, and is, can I be a bard? Yes, I can be a bard. Well, we're doing a little self-insert, right? We're doing a little self-insert. So, okay, bards are the charismatic and often inspirational leaders of the Zaxian people. Oh, 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 we're leaders. Okay. They provide their allies with powerful spells that enhance their abilities to fight. Okay, that's cool, cool, cool. Okay, so what's, what starting location should we have, guys? Should we have Yalin? It's a kingdom which the gnomes control society. Or should we have Huzos? which is a struggling kingdom in the dark world. Magicless. Okay. It's beset on all sides by powerful magic-using kingdoms. Okay, okay. Or Orlania is a kingdom in the world of Xanus. Orlani is a peaceful kingdom where everyone is at home, in place, in society. Prosperous, and it's the capital. So we've got the capital. We've got the no magic place. So I'll, I'll, have, I'll have magic. I'll have a little bit of magic, but I'm going to start in the in the no magic place, <laughs> Alfheim. <laughs> oh, Kendra, you're cracking me up. Orlani is Alfheim. Yes, it is. Hey, Salty, welcome to the stream. Okay, we'll go to, we'll start with, um, we'll be a faction, the faction Kuzos. And our location is either Gerzona or Boca. Gerzona is a farming village in the kingdom of Kuzos. The town's position makes it a tempting target for other magic using kingdoms, but the kingdom's plan of Resettlement has made the town unappealing to raiders. Or we can start in Boca. Boca is a quiet town that's located near the border of neighboring kingdom. The town's economy depends heavily on trade with neighboring towns. Recently, the town has been celebrating the defeat of a nearby kingdom of Nob. The people of the town know they won the battle, but they will likely eventually have to win the war in the dark and dangerous world. Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> I mean, this place sounds chaotic, so I think so. Okay, and we're going to leave world events on since that's the, that's the default. So, okay, so here we go. We're um, Caxus, Texas, um, a female halfling bard. Our faction is Kuzos, and we're from Boca. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the game. I mean, I'm all about defeating nobles, Nikki. We, you know that, so. Why is it taking? There it goes. Okay. The ruler of Yolan has been assassinated by a group calling themselves the Liberation Front. 
The guard of Yolan is taking control of the kingdom in the power vacuum and is pushing for a quick resolution to the assassination. They have issued an arrest for the gnome that is believed to have led the revolutionaries. Oh, shit. Okay. So there's an arrest for those revolutionaries. Okay. Got it. So I guess that's an event that's part of this. All right. Zaxis is a world of peace and prosperity. It is a land... Oh, I thought there was going to be reading here, but I guess not. I'll read it. That's fine, though. It is a land in which all races live together in harmony. The gnomes build their machines and live among the humans. Elves run the academies in which people come to learn. Ogres have no qualms living in the same town as humans and gnomes, yet all is not well. You are Coxus, a female halfling bard in the town of Boca. You were born in Boca and have lived your life in the town. You spent much of your life playing music and singing with other bands and traveling from place to place. You've dreamed of joining the bards in the capital and becoming a powerful celebrity. I mean, sounds like me. That sounds accurate. As you grow older, your parents and family urge you to settle down in Boca and start a life there. Okay, so the way this game works is I can either, I can either say, do, so I can say, you can see, what do you say, or I can, what happens next, that's the story. So I can either write third person of what happens next, I can write that I am taking an action, or I can write some words that I can say. All right, so, okay. So considering the event that we just saw, I think what I'm going to do is say, um, I am looking for, what was it? Can I pull up that event again? I can't remember exactly what it said. World events? Yeah, there we go. She did an arrest for the gnome that is believed to led to have led the revolutionaries. Um, okay, so I'm looking for the revolutionaries. I think that would be fun to do. So then you enter it and it like gives you more. Okay. You am looking for the revolutionaries. Close game, close. And the other thing that you can do is you can just press enter without doing anything and the game will generate more if you want it to. So you're part of a band that has taken up the cause of overthrowing the government. Sweet. You and your comrades are attempting to sabotage the government's plans. Your job is to sneak into the militia barracks and steal some uniforms. Hell oh, yeah, nice. A Star Wars mission. Yes, apparently I'm in a band. Hell yeah. <laughs> AI Dungeon just likes your voice. Oh yeah, steal some uniforms. There we go. Okay, so what do we want to type? Your, snob, your job is to sneak into the militia barracks and steal some uniforms. Okay, so I flirt with the guards of the barracks to get past them. We're a bard, so this is what we would do, right? Let's see if my party can get past. You snake into the main building of the barracks. You feel a cold chill run through you. So I guess it worked because I got in. Oh, I feel a cold chill. Okay. So I shiver. And then I'm going to say, Burr, it's cold in here. Oh, I think I can't do both at the same time. I have to wait for the game to respond. You find yourself in a long tunnel with guards on either side. They are both human and wearing uniforms of the militia. The guards are holding lanterns and moving down the hallway deliberately. Hi, boys. Okay. We're going to greet them. <laughs> Hi, boys. Oh, I think I did. I think I did story instead of. Oh, it still worked. Okay. Hi, boys. I say trying to sound flirty. The guards stop and look at you. One of them is silent, but the other chuckles. <gasps> okay. Um, I approach the one that's chuckling and wink at him. You approach the one that's chuckling and wink at him. Ask for their names. Okay, I'll ask for their names next, Kendra. The chuckling guards seems to have a bit of swagger in his step as he approaches you. His face is round, and he has a thin mustache. Okay, 
what's your name? You say, what's your name? Kelso, the card says. <gasps> You're the one in charge here, you ask, slightly disappointed. I'm the one in charge of this shift. Oh, so Kelso is the shift leader. Okay, I want to twirl the mustache. Well, Salty, we can twirl the mustache. What do you do? Um, I reach out to twirl his mustache. Am I spelling that right? Where's the word? M-U-S. Y'all are going to see exactly how bad my spelling is. This game does amazing things with lyrics and lists. What does that mean, Kendra? You approach Kelso and move your finger to his mustache. As you do, he grabs your hand and looks into your eyes. You feel chills run down your spine. What is it you want? Oh, no, he didn't like it. He didn't like it, Salty. <laughs> oh, it makes funny songs or lists. Um, what is it you want? I want to ask you a question. Irony, hey, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Okay, Kelso stares at you, leaning in closer and breathing slower. He keeps his eyes on you and says again, what is it that you want? <laughs> okay, um, we can't just tell him that we want his uniform. Um... <laughs> Oh God. Okay, okay, okay. A kiss. <laughs> I want a kiss. There we go. I want to see you naked. He didn't even like me touching his mustache. I don't think that's a good idea, Salty. That's a little too, too ham. Kelso looks flustered and takes a step back. I think not. You're scared, you say. Kelso glances at the other guard, then says, What? Oh, I'm just going to press enter. It'll generate more. I have no reason to trust you. We're both going to be here a while. You say you trust can be built over time. Kelso considers this, then says, Okay, what do you say? What do you say, Kelso? This is making me think of, like, Kelso from that 70s show. <laughs> so, like, in my head, he kind of looks like that. Oh, use the story. Story it. Okay. Kelso considers this and says, fine, was your question? What is the situation outside the room? Kelso leans in and speaks quietly. Okay, there we go. Story it. Kelso explains to me that he's... What are they guarding here? Let me scroll up. Back at the event real quick. <gasps> oh no! Guarding the shirt press? Okay. <laughs> Kelso explains that he's guarding the shirt press and he thinks I'm really a very pretty halfling, but he's into guys. That's why he doesn't want, want to kiss me. Um, he thinks we can hang out and be friends, though. I'm just going to straight up ask him if I can borrow his uniform. He also says the guards are having a lot of fun watching me try to get information from people and that I should probably stop asking questions if I don't want them to have even more fun at my expense. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> Tell him the uniform will look better on the floor. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say, let's go somewhere then. I think that snazzy uniform you're wearing... Well, look, better on the floor. Uniform will look better. Oh, then I can't say let's go somewhere. Okay, I understand what you're saying, Kendra. Okay, I think that's now the uniform will look very look better on the 
other guard. We don't know the other guard's name, do we? <laughs> Nikki, this is what I asked for. I mean, I said the stream was going to be this. Reach out to Kelso and begin to slowly unbutton his uniform shirt. Hey, what are you doing? He asks in surprise. You look into his eyes and say, um, I think you need to stop being so repressed and tell the other guard how you feel already. Here, I'll help you. You spilled something on this. <laughs> Caught by surprise, he says, I don't, uh, you slide his shirt off his shoulders a bit and lean in whispering, it's okay. You spilled something on this anyway. Let me, let me take it and clean it for you. <laughs> yeah, this is a serious dub con going on right now. Kelso relaxes his stance and begins to unbutton his own shirt. Yeah, sure. You quickly snatch the shirt and hand him the other one. Um, thanks, you're very kind. Aw, okay. Look and see if the other guard is watching. I look and see if the other guard is watching us. Well, I got the shirt, so I've got the uniform. You glance over and see if the other guard is watching you with a huge grin on his face. The other guard holds up his hands and starts winking as he makes gestures looking over at his partner. <laughs> so he's for it. He's for it. Okay, I'll ask him, what's your name, other guard? Oh my god, Nikki. Okay, I will ask him for a threesome. Okay. He smiles and says, this guy, I've known him since we were both in diapers. I'm Z, and over there is Kelso. So Kelso and Z. Z, how do you feel about Kelso? I mean, it's all text, Nikki. I don't think we can do too much, you know? We're not going to ever see anything, so <laughs> you can't get me, like, uh, a TOS or anything. Z looks over at Kelso and then turns back to you and smiles. He's a good friend and a great guard. You lean in and whisper in his ear. Um, I think there's more to it than that. I think you should admit your feelings. I'll help you by... I'll help you along with a threesome. There we go. Tells the OTP. You got it, Irony. You say, I think there's much more to it than that. I think you should admit your feelings. I'll help you along with a threesome. The other guard looks shocked and snatches his shirt from your hands. He looks at you bewildered and said, I don't even know you. <laughs> what? That's so rude. Okay, but I need that shirt back. I snatch the shirt from the guard and make a run for it. Okay, bye. It's time. It's time to go. This is as much as the flirting can work. You dash through the crowd, pushing past people as you go. A couple of guards and some random peasants try to stop you, but you manage to dodge them all, eventually weaving through the crowd and escaping. Hell yeah. Okay, so I got the shirt. I got the shirt from there. I'm just going to scroll back up and refresh my memory on what we were starting with. That much of your life playing music. Okay, you dreamed of joining the bards and becoming a powerful celebrity. Part of a band that's taken up the cause. You and your comrades are attempting to sabotage the government. Okay, so I return to my comrades, shirt in hand, victorious, and shirt in hand. I feel like if it's a uniform, though, the pants are probably, like, standard, 
you know, black pants and it's really about the shirt. Why isn't this loading? Oh, it's still spinning. AI doesn't know what to say. Alter, undo, or try again. Oh. I guess it doesn't remember that far back. Feel some uniform. Return to your victorious. Maybe I need to say uniform. In hand. I've successfully. Oh, it struggles with complex sentences. Oh, okay. So maybe I don't need to say victorious. Uniform in hand. I was victorious. Oh my gosh. There we go. Do I have to hit retry? Yeah. Okay, so if I have too many clauses in there, then it, it gets messed up. I, I see what's happening. How is the AI doing? It's doing pretty good, I think. Okay. Story it if it doesn't like that. Gotcha, Kendra. The Kendra knows how to play this game. This is she told me to do this one. Okay. So you return to your comrade's uniform at hand. I was victorious. You quickly make your way back towards the safe house. Halfway there, you realize you're being followed by a single guard. You look around for somewhere to hide, but there's nowhere close enough. All right. Um, hey, big boy. What's up? Okay, I'll try to lead him into an alley, Kendra. You turn around and put your finger to your lips. Shh, you say, I'm going to get arrested. Why would I say that to the guard? But okay. As the guard approaches, you can see the uncertainty in his eyes. This is your chance. And do the K word? What's the K word, Kendra? Oh, kiss. Okay. Okay. I wink at him. Blow a kiss. I wink at him and lean, well, we'll do this, lean in for a kiss. He can't arrest me if I kiss him. <laughs> you grab his neck and plant a big wet one on his cheek. Ew, yuck, I don't do men, you say as you run away. Well, okay, apparently I don't do men, <laughs> but that got me away. Okay. So let's, um, let's story it. I make my way into the safe house. <gasps> hey, Jane, how's it going? So happy to have you here. Oh, the lag's pretty bad for you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm like, I'm wired in. There's nothing, unfortunately, that I can do to make it faster. I make my way into the safe house and greet all of my comrades we have a uniform now and we can move forward next phase of our plan i'm ready to move forward with this new life i'm excited about my future and i know it's going to be great you've gained a level oh Sweet, I leveled up, whatever that means. Uh, thank you for the hydrate, Nikki. Okay, so you look at your comrades and ask your drummer to recite the steps. Oh, okay, sure. Um, I look, I guess we can do that as a do, yeah. Ask drummer to the steps of a successful the first thing you all need to do is gather all the items you think you'll need. These are a crowbar for those pesky doors that won't open without a little help. Okay, what else?
a lantern so you can see what you're doing in the dark, a rope for climbing up and down buildings, finally a set of lock picks. Okay, so that seems pretty obvious. Um, I will, oh, another world event. Okay, the ruler of Orlania has announced that the academy will take in any and all children from ages 6 to 10 without prejudice or discrimination. Well, I'm not a child age 6 to 10, so that doesn't really apply to me. So, sorry. Um, oh, we don't know. I just realized we don't know the name of the gnome. Um, let me ask. What is our leader's name? Razzle, short for arachnophobia. Okay, Razzle, you reply. That's not a very welcoming name, the child says. It's short for arachnophobia, you explain. That makes sense. I don't know why they would be a child. <laughs> the AI is kind of messing up a little bit. Oh, well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, get in. Oh, disguise yourself as a child. Okay, okay. Let's see. Um, so let's say... You all go get the supplies. Will guise myself as a child and sneak into the academy. I'll switch it to story. With that, you take the supplies from the children and head away from them. You find a quiet area a short distance away to begin the long process of turning into a child. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that my comrades were children, but apparently they were. Okay. Um, I cast a disguise spell. I ca oh, a ritual. Okay. So I perform. Can't spell that word. There we go. Ritual. To turn myself into a child. This involves a lot of singing and dancing. There we go. Do it like that. Since I'm a bard, I feel like any ritual or spell that I do, I'm going to have to sing and dance. You dance and sing for a good while, having a great time. It works. You've transformed into a small child. Hell yeah. With your new height, you head back to the safe house. Okay. So, hello everyone. It worked. I'm going to the academy now. I'm coming with you, your drummer says. No, but you need to stay here and lead the band if I don't make it back. But stay here and lead the band. It's okay. I'll take on the mission. Okay, let's, um, let's story it. What was my name again? It was like, it was Karen, but with an X or something like that. I can't remember. Oh, here it is. Axis. Okay. Yeah, the AI said that, but it was wrong. That's the leader's name, I guess. Makes her way into the academy, guised as a child. She's able to successfully infiltrate. Go, infiltrate the grounds and sign up for some classes. She wants to get close to the headmaster, connect with other government officials. There we go. Texas, Texas. Yes, thank you. 
All right, you enter the Academy of Orlania and you find yourself in a large foyer with several statues and paintings and adorned walls. Okay. Let me look back at the events real quick. Now y'all see like how often I reread stuff when I, when I role play because I can't remember things for shit. Okay. Ruler has announced the Academy. Okay. Hmm. Taxes is so happy to be here. Um, hmm, what do we want to do? I want to, I want to somehow like connect this so that we can get the the gnome leader to not be um not have an arrest issued anymore. Remind the yelling people that framing. Songs and mounting them isn't the same as adorning walls. <gasps> okay, okay, Nikki. Uh, let's see. Okay. You know. Framing thongs. Them isn't the same thing as adorning walls. You know, framing thongs and hanging them isn't the same thing as adorning walls. That's horrible and offensive, the man says, looking at you in disgust. You're in the presence of a lady. I am a lady. I'm sorry, the man says. Come in. You are Axis. My name is Sid. I'm the dean here. Nice to meet you, sir. Oh, okay. So he's the dean. All right, let's story this. Um... Sid takes me into the records room where we will fill out some paperwork. He leaves, get a cup of coffee. While he's gone, I search through the records for anything about our gnome leader. It has really bad taste in interior decorating. Yes, he does. After about an hour, I find something. It says that he's taken his final vows and will be heading to the capital shortly. I fill out the rest of the paperwork and take my leave of the academy. Okay, so our leader is abandoning the town and heading to the capital? So maybe he's trying to go overthrow there. Um, okay, so I head... To the capital. No, he's not there yet. He's heading to the capital. One more time. Okay. I look. Evidence of where our gnome leader is currently. I made my way back to the band. I'm nervous to tell them what I learned, but surprisingly, they've already booked better paying shows and are all set to play at a wedding in a week. <gasps> okay, so they're good to go. Are you guys still interested in revolution? Or are you over it now that you all have jobs? Okay, I'll ask that next, Kendra, who's getting married. Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? I don't know. I thought maybe things were going well for you. Okay. Who's getting married? Dennis and Brenda, Caxus says. So I... S but I'm Caxus. This doesn't make any sense sometimes. I look over at the couple who are looking into each other's eyes and smiling. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't be so lucky, Nikki. Uh, Kelsey OTP, but it's not going to happen, I don't think. I tried. I tried for them, but it didn't work out. Try typing in third person. Even for the say? Even for the say, I should type in third person? Um, couple who are looking at each other's eyes and smiling. 
What do you do? Okay. Next time, play a Cupid. I don't think, was that an option? Okay, Dennis and Brenda. Um, I'm going to join my band again. Karen does the Cupid Shuffle. <gasps> oh, we can play that. <laughs> plays the Cupid Shuffle. Okay, Caxus joins her, joins her band and plays the Cupid Shuffle. See, and it doesn't understand. Now it says you, Caxus. It's so weird. Come on, you say, let's dance. You grab Caxus's hand and drag her over to the dancing platform in the center of the room. Game, I am Caxus. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're going to change, change this. You grab your, there we go. We're going to grab our drummer's hand. Do you have a twin? I don't, I mean, even if you had a twin, you'd have different names. <laughs> okay. You grab your drummer's hand and have a hand over to the dance dancing platform in the center of the room. All right. Um, we dance the night away at the wedding and the, and we drink way too much wine. You dance the night away at the wedding and you drink way too much wine. You wake up the next morning with cotton mouth and a pounding head. <gasps> I drink some water and take an aspirin before looking over at my drummer sounds like Jane. It does sound like what happened to Jane. <laughs> okay. Caxus is still knocked out. You think about waking her up. No, I'm Caxus, whatever. Think about waking her up so you can get into the academy early, but you'd rather not have to listen to her complain. Um, I'm not going back to the academy. Okay. So here's what we do. We're going to do a story. This is the morning of the next mission. We gather our crowbar, lantern, uniform, and other items. We're going to scale the walls of the king's castle. No. We're going to steal the walls of the jail and retrieve our leader's records. For Narnia, the oppressed dance everywhere. It's true. Okay, we gather our crowbar, lantern, uniform, and other items. We're going to scale the walls of the jail and retrieve our leader's records. We need the documents to prove that he is who he says he is, and we also need them to prove that the government has been lying to the people. Okay, sweet. So what do I do? I put on the uniform. I put on the uniform and sneak into the jail. So I'm going to I'm going to unlock the door from the inside. Hopefully this will give us some more guards to flirt with too. <laughs> the other two hide around the corner while I put on the prison guard uniform. I can do this. I just have to be cool and confident. That's right. Once inside the jail, hey, Erica, how's it going? I unlock the door from the inside so that my comrades can get into the records room. My plan to make you use the bathroom has been foiled. Why is that, Nikki? I only stream for two hours because that's how long I can go without using the bathroom. <gasps> My heart is racing as I slowly open the door. Thankfully, nobody's there at the moment. I step inside and lock the door behind me. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I go through the records until I find our leader's warrant. Oh, because you don't have enough points. Warrant. Once I find it, I burn it on a nearby candle. Ah, thank you for the posture check, Nikki. 
I'll set up, I'll set up straight. The records are in complete disarray, but I look through each individual file until I find the warrant. I hold it up to the candle flame as I watch it burn. Yay! Oh, okay. Thumper, I'll take a look at it after stream. And I'll try the thing um, that we talked about while I set it up for bits, but I'll make like the price zero bits so that you can use it for a while without having to pay. Okay, I escape. I escape the jail and rejoin my comrades. Our, our leader is now safe. It's a snooper smash announcer saying gay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Thank you for the pasta check. Oh, the posture check. I guess I didn't say the er sound good enough. Once I've escaped the jail, I rejoin my comrades. Did you do it? Calpernica asks. Yes, I say. Okay, we're going to say Calpernica is the drummer that it keeps trying to like mix up our names. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I grab Pernia and kiss her. You sing the bandit theme? What's the bandit theme, Kendra? We walk through the streets of Orlania together. We have our arms around each other and sometimes we hold hands. We arrive at the end where we're meeting with the others. We sing the bandit song together. There we go. You sing the bandit song together. We enter the inn. The place is full of our former classmates. We take a table in the corner where we sit down and start to talk. I didn't do a song. Do I have to do... We're going to say former comrades. Edit you. Um, I sing the bandit song. Oh, wait, I have to tell her the plans. So what's the plan, Ka uh, Caxus? We saved our leader, being arrested, all is well. We can go back to overthrowing the government. It's funny you should ask that, Caxus, Russell begins. I was just talking to the rest of the bandits in my band about changing our ahem line of work. Okay, I sing the bandit song. We're gonna try this again, Kendra. Maybe it'll sing the bandit song. It's just not as fun as it used to be, Russell says. Yeah, it's not doing it, Kendra. It's not singing a song. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, okay. What is this? Calpurnia Adams, the one who seduced a priest and bewitched the whole town before being burned at the stake? I don't know what that means, but maybe. <laughs> you gotta leave room for it to make, a, make the song. How do I do that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that one. Is that like one of their dead relatives that they mention? Oh, she was the role model Wednesday shows for her school thing. Oh, okay, okay. I know what you're talking about now. It's been a minute since I've watched that movie. Okay, well, Russell, what would be fun? it's all about you my friend you sing the bandit song that goes like and then it will finish oh okay i will try that well caxus we've been talking and for this moment russell's wife begins to loudly sing the academy song okay so maybe we try to sing the academy song there we go I sing the Academy song along with her, and it goes like this. Capitalize it since they did. There we go. Good. 
There we go. Now it's singing us a song. Okay. Orlania was the land of learning and the arts. This was before the war. High in the mountain, away from harm. The academy sits secure. Okay. Oh, we have another event. The ruler of Yalan has declared that all gnomes must live within the city, within the walls of the city, that they may be malnourished and sub for subversive activity. What? No, we cannot stand for that. Um, I protest out in the streets. This is violence against gnomes. This is dungeon AI, Erica. You go out in the streets and protest. You get down with Yon Lun, you shout. You will, won't stand for this injustice. You're promptly beaten and taken away to a makeshift prison. Oh no! <gasps> we got arrested! Oh no, that wasn't supposed to happen! Okay. Guard, over here, I need some water. Okay, I'll try to make friends, Kendra. The guard comes over and gives you some water while you're drinking it. You choke on a small explosive ball. <gasps> oh no! We died! I didn't know this game would kill me! <laughs> We're dead! Ah! <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Kendra, we can't make friends now because we don't have a head. Um, is it just going to spin forever at this point? Like, does it, does, when it ends, does it actually, like, end? <laughs> they put a bomb in my drink and apparently I didn't even notice. I just drank it. And my head, poof. Okay. I, I guess it just spins forever. Um, and I, I run, I run. Yeah, it won't let me type, even. I was going to say I run around headless. <laughs> but it won't let me type nothing. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's go back. Let's pick a new world. Okay, that was apparently the light world, but a whole bunch of racism happened, so it really wasn't that light. Let's go for the dark world next and see what we can get up to. Kedar is a world of dragons, demons, and monsters. These dark creatures constantly war for control of the land, leaving the few human kingdoms in the shadows of the dark and powerful force. But now the kingdoms of man are fighting back, slowly assembling an army to reclaim their world. Whoa. Okay, let's create a character. Oh, you want Christmas? Okay, we'll do Christmas then. Do you want dark Christmas or do you want fantasy, like, beautiful Christmas, Kendra? I mean, you showed me about this game, so you, you get to pick. Do we want Kringle or Winterbloom? You want Winterbloom? Okay, we can do Winterbloom. Okay. Winterbloom is a wonderland filled with the delicious scents of baking pies, hot chocolate, and fresh evergreen. Year-round, the people celebrate. People dress up in various themed outfits and go to themed stores for themed parties. Whoa, lots of themes. People decorate their homes with beautiful lights and candles, and everyone eats great food and plays games with their friends and neighbors. Okay, let's make a character. We, we, let's be somebody else. Let's be, let's be, um... Kendra this time. You'll tell me if you want to do like a weird spelling of Kendra, but we're gonna we're gonna be Kendra. And I feel kind of an affinity for these for the gnomes since they were um you know we're trying to help them, and they were oppressed last game. So we're gonna be a gnome this time. So we can be a baker, Santa Claus, cheerleader, shopkeep, Grinch, party animal, candy crafter, guild leader, or entertainer. So what class is Kendra? What's this one? Candy crafters. Get their start as lazy-eyed children with sweet toots. By the time they're teenagers, they have mastered the art of candy crafting. Okay, so they really just literally make candy. Um, what's a party animal? Really masters of fun. Party never stops in the city with themed activities, costumes, and parties happening nonstop. Party animals of the world are especially good at throwing great parties and are always the life of the party. Cheerleader? Okay, let's look at that one. The citizens of Winterbloom have taken a vow of holiday cheer. And they'll stop at nothing to spread it to the rest of the world. That's very aggressive for their cheer. Okay, we can be a cheerleader. So starting location, we have Nutcrackers, the League of Holiday Spirits, Cheerful Elves, or Winterbloom Ministry. So the Nutcrackers, the gnomes love to party and have a good time. That's where they are. The League of Holiday Spirits is a group of people who have dedicated themselves to keeping the balance in Winterbloom. Okay. The elves of Winterbloom are known for their cheerful nature. Every day is a new adventure for them. 
okay? The Winter Bloom Ministry is the governing body of Winter Bloom. It's run by a group of secret Santas who are responsible for all the happiness in the world. Beans, hey, welcome, welcome. So happy to have you in the stream. All right, where do we want to be? Do we want to be the Nutcracker Faction, um, which is for Party Party? Or do we want to be Holiday Spirit Faction? Do we want to be like Heart on Our Sleeve Faction? Or do we want to be Responsible for Happiness Faction? What do we think? It looks like, yeah, we get different locations for each one. This is like some sugary locations. They like some cities. Fairy Conclave, what's that? The Fairy Conclave is the result of a group of gnomes combining their resources to make the most amazing holiday party house in Winterbloom. <gasps> well, you go to a party house. It's filled with fairies and gnomes who love to party. The Conclave must is a must-see for anyone looking for a good time. Yeah, party house. Okay, we're doing that. We're doing party house. Nutcrackers, Fairy Conclave. Okay, here we go. Yeah, if y'all are interested in this game, I put the URL on the um, on the overlay so you guys can see where it is and you can play it yourself. You can play it for free. It's totally free online and it's like optional if you wanna if you wanna give them any money. Winter Bloom is a wonderland filled with delicious scents of baking pies, hot chocolate, and fresh evergreen. Year round, the people celebrate. People dress up in various themed outfits and go to themed stores for themed parties. People decorate their homes with beautiful lights and candles, and everyone eats great food and plays games with their friends and neighbors. You are Kendra, a female gnome cheerleader in the Fairy Conclave, an estate in Winterbloom. You've been a cheerleader since you were young and have loved it. You love throwing parties and being around people. You've been friends with other gnomes in the Conclave for a while and are ready to settle down and have a family. While you were young, you lived in a small apartment with your mom, dad, and two sisters. One day you all went to the park like you always did on cold winter days. Okay, so Kendra's looking for a family and she's at the park with her sisters and her mom and dad. So, okay, so I think then Kendra is probably, you know, a little bit, a little bit older, like definitely at least in her 20s, maybe a little older. Yes, hey, welcome, Di. Um, you, you've just, you've just started our, our winter themed uh, story that we're going to tell. We ended our last story with um, trying to start a revolution, but instead we got our heads blown off. Um, we drank a bomb, so that didn't go well. Maybe this one will go better. <laughs> okay. Is NSFW mode enabled? I don't know. How do I do that? Uh, settings, maybe? Safe mode? Oh, I don't need no safe mode. I'm over 18. Action scores, all model type. Apparently dragon. You were asking, somebody was asking griffin or dragon before. Apparently I'm dragon. That's my settings and what they are right now. Is there any other settings I should change before we get this game started? Oh, here's where I do the voice. Okay. Yeah, so we'll do a British male. Okay. I don't think, I don't see a save button in the settings. I think, I think I just, oh, I clicked, oh, it's up here, it's up here. Oh, I'm just blind. All right, <clears throat> so we're at the park with our family. So how about this? Um, I look around to see who else is at the park. How many other people are at the park with us? You look around to see who else is at the park. You and your family walk over to a picnic table and sit down. You look around at the other people at the park. Oh, that's very quiet. It's very quiet. Let me turn him up. There we go. You and your family walk over to a picnic table and sit down. You look around at the other people at the park. Okay, um, let's do this. Sister, are there any hot boys here today? Kendra wants to start a family, so we need to know if there's hot boys at the park. No, your sister answers. Are you sure? You ask. Yes, 
Your sister says, I don't see any. After a bit of silence, you look around again. Apparently there's no boys at the park. Sorry, Kendra, you won't really be able to start your family right now. Okay, so I climb the monkey bars. <laughs> you walk over to the closest monkey bars and put your feet in the holes. You climb up to the top and look around at the park. Anyone watching? You ask. No one responds. Oh no, everybody should be looking at her. She's standing on top of the monkey bars. Okay, so, um, I do a cheer. No. Here, this is better, Kendra. I do a milkshake to bring all the boys to the yard. Kendra, that's not true. I pay attention to you. I guess I'm not a hot boy, so maybe it is true. You jump off, flipping in the air. You land on the ground and do a split. Some people clap. All right, you say. You walk over to the nearest jungle gym and start climbing it. Hey, some people clapped that time. Okay. So I climb, I'm apparently climbing the jungle gym. <laughs> okay, Kohai. So you walk over to the nearest jungle gym and start climbing it. Okay, I climb to the top of the jungle gym and do a cheer for all of my new friends in the audience. Hopefully I didn't make that too complicated. <laughs> You climb to the top of the jungle gym and look out at the small crowd of people. They clap as you jump into a handstand. What should I do next? You think. Okay. I need to do something really spectacular. I need a volunteer from the audience. Clearly, Kendra. Acrobatic feats are required. The crowd parts and people point at someone. You, they say, come on up here. You point at a person. They walk up slowly, looking around nervously. What's your name? Wow! wow. Okay, we're gonna do story. Their name is Nikki. They're not a hot boy, but that's okay. Nikki and Kendra do a cheer together. Wow! But Nikki's not a boy. Nikki's a girl. Cheer together and you both look very sexy. <laughs> okay, Nikki, you can be a hot boy, sure. Don't you give everyone a thumbs up? <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, AI. And what if, if I hit retry, will it give me a different response? Oh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna give me a different response. Dot. What do you think, audience? You ask. Should we let him join our conclave? The audience claps. Oh, apparently Nikki is a boy. <laughs> okay, um, so let's story it. Nikki joins the conclave and loves it there. Nikki's definitely a hot boy in this scenario. Nikki joins the conch. You all practice your cheers together. You continue to live in winter bloom and have many happy holidays with your new friends. Okay. So, Nikki, you're very happy here. Nikki. Oh, I need to do say. Is that right? Yeah. Nikki, what is your favorite cheer? 
Okay, we'll do a dance next. Maybe we'll do do the cheer that Nikki says is their favorite. You say, Nikki, what is your favorite cheer? Oh, that's easy, she answers. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Who can argue with a great big pie in the sky? <laughs> okay, that's my favorite cheer, too. You and Nikki high five. High five. Live happily ever you live happily ever after. Ever after. A fairy Whoa. tale ending. Oh hey, I want I married the love of my life. That's amazing. Okay. Nikki strips for Kendra menacingly. Can I spell menacingly? No, I cannot. There we go. Nikki strips for Kendra menacingly. Oh no! Okay, we're gonna undo. We'll just do Nikki strips for Kendra. Dot everyone loves the conclave. Everything is great. <laughs> Everything is great because Nikki strips for Kendra. Kendra swoons. Oh wait. I'm Kendra, so we're gonna go back to do. I swoon for Nikki. Well, they love your menacing strip, Nikki. It's everything is great. You swoon for Nikki. You both fall in love. You marry and have two children. One daughter and one son. The end. Aw, Kendra got everything she wanted. She married the love of her life, Nikki. And they had one daughter and one son. And I guess we just totally abandoned our family at the park to go marry Nikki. <laughs> okay. Let's do let's do a different one. That one was cute, but I feel like I feel like I made it too short on accident. <sighs> okay. Of course you can name your kids Caxus and Texas. Let's go do the dark uh, Santa one. Santa Claus has been planning to take over the North Pole for years. He has patiently waited for the elves to grow old and weak for his retribution. The time has come. Santa Claus and his naughty ragtag army of elves, gnomes, fairies, dragons, candy cane, vampire elves, etc. now control the North, North Pole, but Santa knows that the North Pole can only remain his if he can conquer all of Kringle. To do this, Santa needs to take out two of his biggest competitors, the Easter Bunny and Jack Frost. Will you help Santa fight back and help the elves? Okay, so who do we want to be this time? Who's talked who's talked recently in the in the chat? I see Beans in there. We can be Beans. Okay. Is Beans going to be North Pole Elves, Candy Elves, Snow Elves, Gnomes, Fairies, or Candy Cane Vampire Elves? I kinda wanna do this because this sounds like so insane. The Candy Cane Vampire Elves were once just like the regular elves. They, however, didn't like to work in the workshop, especially when they could be sleeping or eating candy. One day they awoke to find Santa Claus has left them some candy in their beds. The candy was sweet and it had a new unique flavor, the candy cane flavor. Then they realized that the whole batch of candy canes had been cursed, changing their once regular blood into the sweet, delicious candy cane blood. <gasps> oh no! The candy cane blood substantially increased their power and also some, of, some had found that they no longer needed to sleep. And so the candy cane vampire elves spread around Kringle, infecting other elves and becoming cruel vampires and murderers. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I think if we're a candy cane elf, we have to be a rogue. Rogues are fast, stealthy fighters, so we, because we can use our stealth to bite people. They can range from their allies, striking hard at their enemies and then retreating before they take any real damage. Rogues are useful fighters, but without their team, they're not the best fighters. That's fine. We're going to be, we're going to be a lone rogue. We're going to play a dangerous. So are we part of the... Oh, no, we're not. We're either North Pole Elves or Santa's Naughty Helpers. Led by Santa himself, the Naughty Helpers are a ragtag army. Okay, that's what we read about before. The North Pole Elves are Kringle's peaceful-loving inhabitants that have been unjustly subjugated by Santa Claus. No, we're Santa's Naughty Helpers. And this is the only location, I guess. North Pole is a base of operations. It's filled with candy canes, eggnog, and other holiday-themed items. Help Santa and his Naughty Helpers prepare for war. Fabulous. Let's bite some people. Thank you for the lurk, Irony. Appreciate you hanging out. 
You are currently in the armory, where all the weapons and armors are stored. You've heard that Jack Frost and the Easter Bunny are both on their way to wage war with the North Pole. Okay. So I'm in the armory. Okay, I build an egg nog bomb. A rogue would know how to do that, I bet. Soldiers need to be prepared for anything, so the armory has a vast supply of weaponry. You grab an eggnog bomb and some candy cane shrapnel bombs, just in case. That's right. Okay. Um, I take my weapons. And... Head over to the other troops. We're gonna do some fighting. This is, this is the kill part of the stream. I said seduce or kill, this is the kill part. You walk out of the armory and find your way to a crowd of combat-ready elves. Okay. A high five the other elves. Time to murder. Year after year, year, after the, elves year more more the elves get more and more enthusiastic about their work. You agree wholeheartedly with their goal and admire their willingness to fight for their beliefs. Once everyone has gathered around, you get straight to business. Okay, it's time to bathe in the blood of our enemies. You say it's time to bathe in the blood of our enemies. Okay, let's story this. The Easter... Oh. Oh, it's still loading. I thought I could type more, but not yet. Doesn't know what to do. How does it not know what to do? I guess I made it too complicated. The elves erupt go. with cheers and rush outside for the march to the North Pole. You follow filled with excitement for the battle to come. Okay, our army clashes with the Jack Frost army. The battle furious. I fight the closest enemy. It definitely does better. Our with the army clashes sentences. with the Jack Frost army. The battle is furious. I bite the cloak. He screams and tries to shake me off, but I hang on. He collapses to the ground and I viciously rip out his throat. Soon the battle is over and the Jack Frosts have been soundly defeated. Sweet. I stand on their. No. I almost said dead corpses, but that's not necessary. I stand on their corpses. You stand on their corpses. You stand on the chest of the fallen Jack Frost King and let out a primal scream of victory. <gasps> the remaining Jack Frosts are either scattered or in full retreat. I guess I actually bit the King. So, <laughs> good job Beans, you bit the King. Live corpses are scary. Yeah, live corpses would be terrifying. But we could do that. Like, we could do that. The um, slain corpses of the Jack Frost army begin to stir again. They're zombies! It's like Game of Thrones with ice zombies. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to story that. Dang it. It's not going to... You say the slain... Up. The undead began to shamble oh, forward. The elves stare in horror as the creatures they've just vanquished get back up again. You snarl and leap atop one of the walking corpses, digging your claws into its skull. Oh, I have claws. Okay. Here we go. I throw... Oh. I throw my pepper... Mint shrapnel bomb. 
at the zombies. <laughs> it clearly is, Nikki. This is somebody's kink. You pull the pin of the first bomb and throw it at the zombies. The bomb explodes, leaving a few wounded but hardly slowing them down. You grab another bomb and throw it, then another and another. <gasps> I'm exploding them. Okay. All of the zombies explode into tiny, tiny bits. They can't be reanimated. I shout at Jack Frost. You like that, Daddy? There we go. All of the zombies explode into tiny, tiny bits that can't be reanimated. I shout at Jack Frost. You like that, Daddy? I shout. Jack Frost walks over to his children and stares at them sadly. They were good elves, he says. He looks up at me. That was an excellent idea. It took daddy literally. No, game, that's not what I meant. That's not what I meant. Okay, what do you do? I bite Jack Frost and rip out his jugular. Sorry, I kill you in front of your kids. You bite down as hard as you can, sending a wave of hot blood down your throat. It's the best thing you've ever tasted. You shove your claws into Jack Frost's chest and rip out his heart. Oh my god, that was so violent. <laughs> we are victorious. We still have to deal with the Easter Bunny's army, y'all. The elves cheer and gather up the heads of the Frost army, including your kill, the king. Sweet. Okay, so the elves cheer. What are we going to do about the Easter Bunny? This is so on brand in the weirdest way. This is really weird. It's weird how sexual it is, even though I'm trying to be violent. Bunny can go jump in a hole says the leader of the elves. <clears throat> uh, I don't think it's going to jump in a hole. I think it's supposed to come attack us. Okay, sorry. The Easter Bunny's army marches upon us. We must now defeat them too. The Easter Bunny's army marches upon us. We must now defeat them too. What are we going to do? You ask. Jack Frost glares at the approaching armies. We don't have many options, do we? He says quietly. Uh, Jack Frost, you're dead. Okay. Let's make this Kringle instead. Okay, so Kringle glares at the approaching army. We don't have many options, do we? Um, what do you do? Okay, I pull out my egg nog bomb. You pull out your egg nog bomb. I made this special for the bunny. You find yourself a nice spot and wait for them to come to you. I've got something to says Kringle, digging around in his pack. He pulls out a small blue vial. What? Well, if somebody's going to have a, a random liquid and we're role-playing, you know what we're going to do. I take the vial and drink the blue liquid.
You swallow the blue liquid and instantly feel warm. You feel the eggnog coursing through your veins, making you feel energetic. Oh, okay. So now I'm like hyper up on eggnog. I throw my massive eggnog bomb at the... Oh, there's not a space there. At the Easter Bunny Army. I heard you like eggs. Nikki, I think there's lots of ways to win this game. Your method would probably work. You throw your massive eggnog bomb at. The eggnog bomb explodes into a cloud that covers the entire army. What's in that stuff? You ask, bewildered. Magic, Kringle answers. Magic? I use my magic to make the eggnog boil. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> The eggnog boils and kills the bunnies. The army dissolves in front of you. Good job, says Kringle, smiling at you. You smile uncertainly back. Okay. Well, we killed everyone. Overwhelmed with battle lust, I kiss Kringle. You overwhelmed with... His lips are cold. You bite down. I can't believe you bit me, he says, his voice hoarse. I like the taste of your blood. Ah, oh, thank you for lurking, Tap. Have fun with Pathfinder. Seduce a lot of monsters for me. Oh, That's it the won't right way be the last tabletops. time you taste my blood. Kringle disappears, laughing. What? He just, like, bailed on me. He just bailed on me. Kringle, why? Okay. I think we're done with this little story. <laughs> oh, we could shout Daddy at him. Daddy, wait. It's gonna think, like, not that kind of Daddy. It's gonna think like a real Daddy. You're, You're alone, alone in the middle, in the of, middle of the snowstorm. Oh, no, it knows it's Kringle. Kringle? Okay. You call. Your skin begins to burn and you break out in a sweat. <gasps> I roll in the snow. I have to cool off. <laughs> the snow is wet, and it soaks your burns. You can feel it freezing to your skin. No! It's painfully cold. And you're shaking uncontrollably. I think the magic is killing me, y'all. He gave me, he gave me like temporary magic. Out of the corner of your eye, you think you see the shadow of a sleigh being pulled by tiny reindeer. It's flying toward you. You hear bells jingling in the distance. <gasps> Help me! Help me! In front of you appears Santa. He's sitting on his sleigh, and he's holding court with a group of little children. They're laughing and smiling as they tell him what they want for Christmas. I crawl towards Santa. Santa, I was wrong. I picked Kringle. It should have been you all along. You fall to the ground, and you cannot move. You're freezing. The children laugh as they pile into the sleigh. The bells on the harness jingle merrily as the sleigh lifts into the air. No, it's leaving me! No! I killed all the armies for them and everyone's just abandoning me. The children laugh and they reach down, grabbing your arm. They lift you up and into the air. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I flail 
as I fly with them, barely able to hang on since I'm like burning and freezing and dying all at the same time. I flail as I fly with them, barely able. I grab onto one of the reindeer and the deer flies out from under me. I fall into the cold, dark night sky. I look down. It's a long way to the ground. Oh no! <gasps> okay. Um, I fall... ...from high into the snow. Oh, tell it you can fly! Oh, okay, we'll fly. Um, I realize I can fly. Oh, just say you spread your wings. Okay, I spread my wings. You spread your wings. I don't have Christmas cheer. I have my Christmas vampirism. My wings catch the air and I glide gently down into the snow. I walk toward Kringle. The smile on his face seems a little forced. Christmas. I'm pretty mad at what he did to me. Um, I hate you now. You say I hate you now. I'm ready to let it all out, but my body is frozen. I stand there helpless, shaking uncontrollably. I can't even feel my face, I, I say. I the last bit of my magic to kill Kringle. Bye, Kringle. You betrayed me. You left me in the snow. Kringle's eyes widen in terror, but he can't move. You killed Kringle. I say, Kringle is dead now. He has no future. No. You tried to kill me. That's what happened. Okay, Kringle's eyes widen in terror, but he can't move. You tried to kill me, I say. Kringle is dead now. He has no future. Okay. I win Christmas. The end. Congratulations. Congratulations, you're the new master of Christmas. You are the new master of Christmas. I am the Kringle. Okay. <laughs> I think that's it for that game. All right, guys. So what we, what I want to do next is actually I want to show you guys something. I want to show you guys something. We're going to get out of full screen mode. So I have a little story to tell you. This has nothing to do with the game. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the game. I just want to tell you. Show us your naughty list. I mean, what? <laughs> so this has nothing to do with the game. I just want to tell you guys this. So for those of y'all that don't know, some of you guys do, because um, I've talked about this a few times, not on stream or anything, but like in various chats and stuff, that um, we have a bunch of stray cats in the neighborhood, and we've been feeding and playing with some of them for about a year, two in particular that are really sweet. And you also know, um, if you are in a bunch of other servers with me, it's been raining like crazy for the past couple of weeks so so uh the two kittens that uh have been really sweet ran into the house <laughs> so let me show you our new our new cats let's full screen this again so you can look on their glory this is cj and this is coke Okay, so this is what happened. CJ ran into the house all on their own. Um, now, we haven't gotten a chance to flip CJ over, so we're not sure if it's a, a boy cat or a girl cat. Uh, you know, we haven't been able to confirm if it has balls or not, basically, is what I'm saying. So its name is either Cherry or Jack to match with Coke. We don't know which because we don't know if it has balls or not. And then Coke right here. So Coke had the original name, and it's got this little white spot on its nose, which is really the main difference between those two. So that's why his name is Coke. <laughs> so Coke, it sounds like Coca-Cola, but it's really, it's really cocaine. <laughs> so that's, yes, it, so that's Coke. And once um, CJ came in the house, uh, of course we had to get Coke in the house too. So the next time Coke came up to the door, we got those temptations. Yeah. 
we got those temptation treats that cats go absolutely bonkers for and basically made a trail of temptations from the door to like kind of far inside the house and it just ate along the trail and then we closed the door behind it too <laughs> so they're both in the house now um we're acclimating them Coke, unfortunately, I, I chose this picture because you can't, they'd still look cute in this picture, you can't tell it, but this eye right here is actually really jacked up, like, it's, it's like weepy and fucked up and stuff, so we need to get them to the vet to get them spayed or neutered. Um, Coke's a girl, like, Coke will let you pet it a lot, so we were able to determine that. CJ, we're not super sure. Um, it's probably a girl too, though, I think it is, but we don't know. So we gotta get them to a vet to get them spayed or neutered or whatever and get this eye checked out. Um, so we, we might have doubled our cat population. I don't know. I don't know if we're keeping the kittens after we get them fixed up. We'll see. But they're actually acclimating really, really well. So during the stream, during the stream, my husband sent me this picture. And, uh, and this is, this is Coke finally came up and sat on his lap. Like, what? Look at that. Look at that. They went from, like, not really wanting to be handled at all um well coke will let you pet it cj still won't let us really pet it too much uh but this is the first time that they've actually like come and sat in our laps and tolerated more than just being like pet on the head so i'm very very proud i'm very proud of coke being that that happened uh right now we're trying to determine if coke and cj can get along with queen and ash also because that's kind of the other sticking point Right, like we have two other cats already that we've had for a while. So we have to see if we can if they can get along. Um right now, Coke and CJ are clearly not super happy because they're not they're not covering their poop <laughs> in the litter box. And I think it's really upsetting Queen. Um, she's getting frustrated with them and she kind of like doesn't want them to go into the, the cat room where we have the litter box. So we'll see how that goes. We're working on it. Um, but, uh, but we'll see, and I will keep you guys updated on the, on the CJ and the, and Coke and how they're doing, but they're doing pretty good right now is once they're kind of out and about a little bit more, I'll take some more pictures and show you guys and keep you updated. I need to make some TikToks of them for this weekend. Cause I know that's what I want to post on there, but I just haven't made them yet. Cause they're very skittish. Most of the time they're under the bed taking a nap. <laughs> so of course you can't film too well under the bed. I wanted to make sure I showed you guys that. And I just realized also, I have something else to show you guys. Uh, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki, what is this? Oh my God, girl. Oh, oh, you can't really see it very well. You can't see it very well on here. Oh, it needs the black background. How do I make it? How do I make it be? How do I make it do the black background? Do I need to open it in Photoshop? Let's see. I think I might need to open it in Photoshop. One sec. Because there's more, too. Nikki's over here just making emojis based off of the stream. <gasps> Girl, you're crazy. I love this. Okay, let me get Photoshop going. Okay, and they need, they definitely need dark backgrounds. Can't see them otherwise. All right, give me three different emojis. So give me just one more second, y'all, and I will drag those over and you can read. Oh, that one needs a white background. There we go. <laughs> these are amazing. Okay, these are amazing. Here we go. Paxis, Texas of Zaxis. <laughs> I'm so adding these to the server. Okay. And then we have We Stand Kelsey, our OTP. <laughs> they are so OTP. And this, this, so Kendra, I know you had a few other lines after that you were super into, but this is my favorite line of the stream. Ooh, yuck, I don't do men. <laughs> uh, that's apparently how um, Caxis of Texas feels. <laughs> Oh, I love these. I love these. Okay. Let me. 
Oh my gosh. Okay, come over here. All right, let's get back. Let's get back to something else. Let's do webcam only for a second. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is some of you guys, the hot boy was a great cheerleader. It's true, it's true. Nikki and Kendra were great cheerleaders. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna do those tarot card pulls for it looks like Nikki and Lunar. If anybody else wants to ask the Kawaii Tarot deck a question, you're welcome to go ahead and do so because I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the question and uh, and pull the cards for you guys. Y'all, this deck is so cute. Like, look at, oops, I've already used it a bunch, so it's like a little bit loose. There we go. Like, look at how cute this whole setup is. This is freaking adorable. Luna, don't be nervous. It's not that serious, really. Like the tarot stuff, it's not that serious. So don't be nervous. Don't take it too serious. I really treat this stuff very much like, you know, um, religious people might treat prayer or, you know, spiritual people might treat meditation. Like to me, this is just a tool. This is just a tool to show you some different ways of thinking about something. So if you really struggle with um, prayer and meditation and things of that nature and you don't really get a lot from it, then I think something like tarot is really, really great for kind of unlocking that and like knocking loose some of those thoughts, you know what I mean? That, um, that are kind of like stuck up in your subconscious and it gives you like a different way to think about things. So that's what I use it for. It's not serious though. It's not serious. Okay. All right, do we want to do we want to do Nikki's question first or do we want to do Lunar's question first? I think we'll do I think we'll do Lunar's question and then Nikki's. Hell yeah. I'm practicing a lot more with these. So I've had a tarot deck for a while, but they're like, you know, it's like the big, tall, like, you know, tarot decks are mostly like tall and like my hands, like you can see them compared to the deck. They're really small. So I can't do a normal shuffle with tarot cards, but getting these that are actually like card size, I can shuffle them now. So I feel a lot more comfortable and confident with them. And it's really, really helped with, uh, with using these myself as opposed to just, you know, asking other people <laughs> to do tarot for me. Okay, so will Lunar be successful in her streaming journey? All right, so the tarot deck says magician. I pulled it first up, so we've got magician here. So this is what I do. Can I change my question? Of course, Nikki, you can change your question. I haven't, I haven't um, redeemed it yet, so you still have time. And then I've got a book that explains each of the cards here. So I'll look at the passage and then I kind of just like intuition, kind of look at my judgment and see what I think. So the magician stands for spark, concentration, and power. So I'm just going to take a second to read this and then I will give you um, my thoughts, Lunar. Okay, I think your answer is yes. And this is why, because the magician is a is the first person that the fool count encounters on their journey, which there's like a whole story with the tarot cards um, that I can go into at some other time. But basically the magician, like any good teacher, this is the passage why I think the answer is yes. Like any good teacher is here to show you the power and potential behind your own ideas. Armed with skill, logic, and intellect, the magician suggests that now is the time. You have the creativity, tools, and resources to manifest something new in your life. So I think that means you need to get on a streaming schedule and be putting some effort into your streams. And if you do that, then you are gonna be successful. And now is the perfect time to do that. So don't wait, get yourself organized with everything that you need and, uh, and you will be a successful streamer. That's what, that's what the Kawaii Tarot deck has to say for you, Lunar. 
All right, Nikki, did you want to change your question to something else? We can, if you have like, I mean, meme questions are fine. I know I'm not. Yeah, just change it. Just tell me in the chat what you want your new question to be and I'll ask that instead. It's not going to let you do the redeem again if you're trying to. Okay, there we go. Am I making the right call in moving away from my writing partner? Oh, okay. That is a really good question for this tarot deck because this tarot deck, I did an interview with it when I very first started it, and it's all about two things, structure and creativity. And the other thing that it told me is that it's not very good at long-term things. It's much better at short-term questions. So like these, you know, what should I do right now type of questions. It's, uh, it's a bit better suited for. So I think that this thing that you're asking is the perfect type of question for this particular deck. All right, so this is our question from Nikki. Am I, is Nikki making the right call in moving away from a current writing partner that she has? Okay. Let's see what it says. All right, so we've got judgment, but it's in, it's in reverse. The reverse judgment. Let's see what that says. I'm just gonna take a second to read it and then I'll tell you what my thoughts are. Okay, so reverse judgment is about judging yourself. So you are doing a little bit too much self-criticism in this situation. I think this is saying that you're probably making the right decision, but you're spending a lot of time beating yourself up about it. Because this isn't about like external judgment or other people judging you. This is about you judging yourself too much. So I think what you need to do is instead of spending so much time thinking about that, that judgment about judging yourself, instead think about what is actually gonna be good for me and just act on it, just go for it. So whichever direction that is, dropping this person or not dropping this, this person, you need to stop listening to that judgy part of yourself and instead listen to the part that's trying to help you. That's my, that's my take on this, Nikki. I hope that helped. Irony, you so should. So the reason why this Channel Point Redeem was added, and I don't think she's um, she's here tonight, but the reason why this Channel Point Redeem is added and why I've got this um, adorable tarot deck now is, uh, is one of my friends, Alice, bought this for me off of my wish list when we had our 12-hour stream this past weekend. So big, big thank you to Alice for getting me back into tarot and getting me kind of started with this sort of thing. And... Um, and getting me like back, getting me like back into it. So, so huge thank you to Alice. And that is our tarot readings for this stream. So I think we're going to continue to do these on artistic license. I'm, I'm probably going to turn the redeem off for um, interstage window just because that's more like podcast style. You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't want to spend like the end of that stream doing that. We already have like a really good like ending formula that I don't want to interrupt. So we're probably going to be continuing to do this on artistic license, but probably not an interstage window. So y'all look for that redeem if I ever forget to turn it on <laughs> during artistic license and you have a question for the Kauai Tarot deck, then don't hesitate to say so. I'll turn it back on. Uh-oh, what's happening with the sounds? I see that you redeemed that, Nikki, and it's not playing. Hang on. Oh, hey, Coke. Y'all, Coke is in here. Oh, you heard the applause? There it goes. Okay. Okay. Yo, Coke, hey. It just came in here and meowed at me. Oh, you heard it? You heard Coke? Hey, girl. Hey, girl. 
Where's the... Oh no, it's way over there. Hang on. I'm gonna show y'all what she looks like up close. Oh no, don't run away. No, she's gone. I was trying to pick up the baby cam. It was like on the floor, like away from me. Oh well. That's okay. Y'all saw a picture. I'm sure I'll get her on the baby cam at some point during some stream. She really likes this room, so it's bound to happen. Uh, and I'll post more pictures of her too. Okay. So with that, let's actually move to what we like to do. Oh, we're going to close all these. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Let's actually move to what we like to do at the end of our streams. Let's look at some Pokemon. Pokemon, gotta catch them all. And the chat is in the way, as always. There we go. Cleared out the chat. All right. So, this week, we are going to look at some Gen 2 Pokemon. Let's pull up our favorite little website for this meme. And for those of you guys that haven't seen this meme before, we are slowly filling this out a little bit more every Thursday night with our favorite Pokemon. Um, I have copies of this, blank ones, if you want to do it with me. Just hit me up. I've got them linked on my Twitter. I'll just have to go find you, excuse me, where they are. All right, so we're going to do some Gen 2 Pokemon. And let's also change this down to National Dex Number, excuse me. And the first one we're going to do is Fire Types. So the Fire Types that we can do for Gen 2 are the Cyndaquil line, Slugma, Houndor line, and Magby. So I've already got Houndor and Houndoom on there. Um, and y'all know my love for the, the starter fire starters. So obviously my choice here is little Cyndaquil. So there's little Cyndaquil. So cute. It looks like a little porcupine anteater thingy. Adorable. Let's look at its entries. It is timid and always curls itself up in a ball. If attacked, it flares up its back for protection. It usually stays hunched over. If it's angry or surprised, it shoots flames out of its back. And it goes in this slot right here. So right here in the fire slot. All right, the next one we're going to look at is the electric types for this generation. So the choices here are Chincho line, Pichu, Marip line, or Elekid. So that's the different ones we can choose here. And, of course, I am going to go with the pink one, this electric sheep, the middle evolution of the electric sheep, Flaffy. It's just, it's so cute. And it's pink, so of course we have to go for that. As a result of storing too much electricity, it developed patches where even downy wool won't grow. Its fluffy fleece easily stores electricity. Its rubbery hide keeps it from being electrocuted. Well, that's handy. And it goes... Right in this spot, right here, Gen 2 Electric. All right, next we're going to take a look at the fairy types. My choice here is going to be obvious as well. So we've got Cleffa, Igglybuff, Togepi, and Togetic, Marilyn, Snubble, or Granville. So I have to go with one of the pink ones, of course. So I choose for this slot to put Snubble. So it's a little bulldog Pokemon, pink bulldog. Although it looks frightening, it is actually kind and affectionate. It is very popular among women. It has an active, playful nature. Many women like to frolic with it because of its affectionate ways. True, very true. There we go. Oh, that's not. Wrong one. Spoilers. Okay, there we go for the fairy type. Yes, hey, you came in right at the end. Don't worry, though. We're going to raid somebody right after this. So stick around. But we are almost done for today. All right. The next slot that we are going to look at is our psychic Pokemon. So let's take a look at the different psychic types we have for Gen 2. All right. We've got the Natu line, Espeon, Slowking, Unknown, Wobbuffet, Girafferig, and Smoochum. So, of course, you know how much I love the Evolutions. We got to go with Espeon, but I'm putting Espeon in my favorite psychic slot. But let's read about him first. 
It uses the fine hair that covers its body to sense air currents and predict its enemy's actions. By reading air currents, it can predict things such as the weather or its foe's next move. So it looks cool and it's got good psychic powers. It's so fancy. We love Espeon and I put him down here in my favorite slot. So then what I'm going to put then for the psychic Pokemon is we're going to go with Giraffarig. I think this Pokemon is so cool. It has a regular head and then it has a head on his butt back here. <laughs> and its name is, what are, I think it's called Palindrome, where it's like spelled the same forwards and backwards. I think that's what that's called. If it's not, y'all know what I'm talking about. But like you can put turn it backwards and it's still Giraffarig. So cool. Its tail has a small brain of its own. Beware. If you get close, it may react to your scent and bite. Its tail, which also contains a small brain, may bite on its own if it notices an alluring smell. <laughs> so it'll literally bite you with its butt. It'll bite you with its butt if you let it. <laughs> so, all right. So that's the Pokemon meme for today. We're, we're getting close. We're getting close. We've only got a few more Gen 2s to go before we'll fill it out. But we'll move farther down kind of as we continue to go through this. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for coming to the stream today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that text adventure. That was Kendra's choice. So Kendra, especially, I hope you enjoyed that. Nikki, I know you enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and I thought that was pretty fun. I thought that was pretty fun. But next week, we're going to get back to Final Fantasy X. So we're going to continue on um, past. We just got Ixion is where we just, we just stopped at, and we're about to head over to the Moonflow. So that's where we are in that game. That's where we're going to go. Let me tell you all the places you can find me. All right, you can find me right here on Twitch, where I stream on Thursday evenings. That's Artistic License. That's my stream where we kind of do whatever I feel like doing. And then we also have Interstage Window on Saturdays, which is my conversation stream, usually with Landon, and sometimes we also have a guest. And that is where we go like a deep dive into a role play or, you know, nerdy fandom kind of topic or something like that. Of course, I also have my YouTube show, which is called Spare Room, that goes up on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. That is my scripted role play help content. So if you're more into scripted content, check out that YouTube show. That's going to get you all of that roleplay help advice, same stuff that we give on Interstage Window, just in a scripted, edited format. Uh, also, I have all of the usual things that content creators have as far as supporting me. You can do PayPal tips, you can sub to uh, the Twitch here, you can jo join my Patreon, all that beautiful stuff. Um, I have a Discord server if you're interested in joining the Discord server. It's a roleplay help Discord server, so if you would like to either get or receive some help with some roleplay role play problems you're having, go ahead and join up there. And then the social medias that I use are Twitter and TikTok. They are mostly advertisement for the YouTube and the Twitch, not gonna lie. However, if you follow my Twitter, you can also get some of my hot takes, and if you follow my TikTok, you can also get some silly stuff from time to time. So you're welcome to check those out as well. Okay, so that's it for today. Let's find someone to raid. Let's see who of my followers is online today. Okay, so we can watch. We've got Hercules doing Ark. We've got Lone Wolf doing Raft. Or we've got Wolfie doing Little Nightmares. Um, I think maybe either we could go watch some Ark. Or if you guys are interested in Little Nightmares, Wolfie's only got seven viewers right now. What sounds more interesting to you guys, Ark or Little Nightmares? I think let's do let's do arc let's go watch some arc with hercules okay guys we're gonna go ahead and send out the raid so go ahead and join that up i see y'all hopping in thank you guys so much all right we're gonna go ahead and raid thank you everybody for joining me today and i will see you all on saturday for interstage window okay bye